Good morning, folks. We've got some key stories to hit today. That special video is coming tonight, so I hope we've done our homework. The full NASA suite of space weather products is still down, but as was the case yesterday, it just doesn't matter. We've got all the Proba 2 swap data available. Not a minute of the sun missed in NASA's shutdown, and frankly, they picked a pretty good week to do it. The sun is silent at the moment, almost like she's waiting for the rest of the audience. No flares whatsoever, and while we did take impact from a coronal hole stream overnight, it was even weaker than expected, and Earth's magnetic field is handling it well this morning. Folks from the solar wind, the solar flares, to the visible views and ultraviolet light, there's always a backup way to watch the sun, and I know them all. Anyway, it must be time for astronomy, where for the three trillionth time in a row we've got astronomers surprised, shocked at what they've found. Except this time it's not about something millions of light years away. This is asteroid Psyche, the metal asteroid that's actually not quite as metal as they thought. They had envisioned this thing being an exposed planetary core, but it's just an asteroid. The team of geoelectric risk analysis is back at it again here, suggesting that an order of magnitude better induced current forecasting can be had with the greater coverage area of data collection. They say not only is that 10 times greater predictability desirable, obviously, but that without it, they may miss critically important events and patterns at the very localized level. Two quick notes here. First up is my wondering if it's starting to become poor form to pick on climate scientists. Everywhere they look, every new application of the model to the past. Every time the sun is investigated, or uncertainties, or bias, or cosmic rays, or aerosols, or clouds of the global electric circuit, their story changes. Modeling fail on this one here. Folks, it was just a few days ago we shared the story about the critical frequency of the F2 layer changing, and how it might be more a sign of the weakening magnetic field of Earth than anything else. Today, we find more new electrodynamic characteristics up in the F layer, and while they will always claim it's the better equipment or the new analysis technique, they should have spotted those already. These may be newer features as Earth's change marches on. A bit less speculation to close out our little AGU run here today. Folks, the heliospheric current sheet, which houses the interplanetary magnetic field, delivers an electromagnetic smack to Earth every 7 to 10 days, regardless of whether it's sunspot maximum or minimum. It's the magnetic reversal moment in the solar wind, and as we've seen implied by the cloud and electron content forcing studies, it's now confirmed that the magnetic reversal of the solar wind, with the interplanetary magnetic field, is the dependent condition for penetrating electric fields here in Earth. This is important for three reasons. First, it's critical for understanding where that solar energy is coupling with the planet, part of that better small-scale data theme. Second, this is a major player in solar climate forcing, not only elucidating a key electrodynamic process that affects pressure cells and clouds, but offering mechanistic explanation assistance for known statistical correlations. Third, let's take that new confirmation that the impact of the sheet magnetic reversal causes penetrating electric fields, and remember that the Sun takes this same effect on the galactic scale. The Taurus jet model of galaxies, the modeled magnetic field of galaxies, and then every observation of the galactic midplane here in the Milky Way hints at the similar scaled-up magnetic system at the galaxy. Unlike Earth's sheet encounter every week or so, we've clocked the suns at around once every 12,000 years. Your job is to imagine those penetrating electric fields at the level of the sun in the galactic magnetic reversal. We greatly appreciate your support. That Sunday night special video is ready for tonight. With most of Earth being ocean, what happens when the cosmic thunderbolt hits the water? We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.